Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming out and uh, spending a little time with me today. I will uh, kick the recording off here. For those of you who don't know, my name's Ed Carter. I'm the architect behind Trader Vision, and uh, this is the Trader Vision 2020 User Workshop for June 13th, our weekly. Uh, let me. There we go. Okay, let's uh, talk about what I want to try to get done today. I'm going to go through some changes that we made, mostly basically the, the goal widget, uh, but there are some fixes for the performance widget as well, specifically having to do with uh, the printing now uh, works for all of the reports. I'm going to quickly blow through the trade plans um, and probably the, just the charts for the stocks that were opened in the Feature Trade Idea blog. Speaking of which, let me pull this over you. Okay. Uh, the blog that I'm talking about is open, is free to the public, and it's available here under Trade Ideas, uh, TV 2020 Trade Plans, and I plan the uh, feature trade idea uh, both on the chart and put up a plan, as well as uh, then providing a link to a video from our YouTube channel that you can, let me see if I can get it copy the link there's a link to the YouTube channel uh, if anybody's not subscribed feel free to subscribe and you'll get notified of our new videos okay I don't need that anymore uh, Bruce W asks can you use Trader Vision 2020 for option trades, setup tracking and management? And the, the sad answer is it was not designed for options yet. We've got on the development schedule, uh, building out the options functionality. That said, all options trades come from a stock chart or ETF chart, basically. And I do have some users who tell me they use it for planning their um, under the underlying portion of their uh, options trade, but it's not going to help you with deltas and it's not going to help you with spreads or picking out uh, anything out of the chains. So it, it truly isn't, and I, I do not, you know, I do not recommend it if you are an options only trader or heavy options trader. It's not uh, not ready for you yet. So I'll I'll shoot you straight. Uh, returning to the agenda here, um, after I review those, I will uh, just go ahead and do some plans. And if you've got tickers, I'll look at some of your tickers as well. And of course, questions and answers along the way. So with that said, let's get started here. Uh, let's see. Today was a pretty rough day. Uh, we had three trades closed, uh, but this does show the power of, of using Trader Vision. Um, specifically, if you look at KRG, and I'll pull up that chart, you can see that we've been, uh, I've been doing my job. Our entry was back here, and uh, I've been moving the, the stop up basically reducing the risk profile of the trade. We took out our first target, so we had that in the bank. Uh, and then today we had a nasty candle that, that took us out. So for that trade, uh, we were stopped out, but we were stopped out with a, a small win, 5.5%. But that beats a stick in the eye, and it certainly beats a loss. Uh, the other two that were stopped out today uh, is Radian, and that one has been a thorn in my side since it was picked. Um, there's the trade plan for it. Again, um, we had an entry here and uh, had a nice little pop, but then it has just uh, pulled back as the stair steps are, are involved. 
with any chart, uh, but it just it took out our stop today. And that, again, was a tiny loss because I've been doing my job moving the stops, managing the trade. So uh, that was a $12.50 loss. Uh, I guess I'll have to skip Starbucks tomorrow and uh, learn from it and move on. The third one that was closed out here uh, was uh, Maycom and TSI. That one kind of kind of uh, was a very bad day. Uh, I'm not sure if there was news on them or what the the situation was, but we had an entry here and a couple up days, and then bang, we got taken out today. Uh, again, our stop had not been moved, so it was at the bottom of the buy box, and so I think that was like. A 4% loss, something like that. Yeah, 3.91%. Uh, that one was a little bit hefty for this because we had not raised our stop yet. Uh, it had not moved enough. Uh, so we had a $194 loss and uh, not particularly thrilled about that. But, you know, uh, that happens. And we just keep working the process and moving on. Uh, we've covered the other closed ones in the past, so I won't go through those again. We've got five open trades, um, including one that just barely opened today and that, uh, you know, basically is open with a, a $17 gain. So no, no sense really looking at uh, General Mills. But uh, I think G Pro was yesterday. And G Pro, uh, we entered on the wick, came back down, and then popped as it came back up off of that. So we did get the entry that I was looking for. Um, and today we retested it again. Overnight, I moved the stop up here. Um, so even if we were to be stopped out on this thing, we're looking at about a 2% or less loss. Uh, and hopefully this will get back on the horse and start heading up here uh, to do this little little gap fill there. Uh, what else? Uh, I guess CDNA is the next one. Uh, I like this consolidating here. That long wick day was a little bit nervous, uh, nerve wracking. Um, but uh, we have moved the stop up and we are just uh, basically consolidating after already making our first target. And we're looking for the next push up in here to, to take out that, that final target. Uh, on the trade plan... As you can see, we've already booked our entire goal for the trade. So uh, even if we are stopped out now, we'll actually make more than, uh, than our goal. Uh, so that's not too bad. Our stop is now up at 1430, which is above that first target. So the worst we're going to get is about 14% about exclusive of a gap, you know, a large gap. So uh, we're continuing to work the process, continuing to uh, work towards reducing our risk and uh, improving our, our profits. We've got about a little under half of the, the trade still open. Uh, RDN finds support and follow through. I might. It would depend on whether or not um, there were better charts for me. Um, basically, what I'm doing with this account uh, is this particular account. I'm just trading and managing the uh, feature trade ideas. And it's a little bit difficult in that they're not all my ideas. Rick and I basically bounce back and forth on, on picking them. And we collaborate on, on coming up with them. Um, you know, I, I'm going to have to see a buy signal. And, you know, like you said, if it, if it finds support, there's nothing wrong with that little pullback. Um, it's just, uh, you know, wasn't what, what I was looking for. And, uh, we were looking for a breakout and gap fill, which I thought we were going to get what we didn't. So such is life. Uh, again, that was not a terrible position. It's not a huge mover either. So there might be ones with better reward potential for us. 
which ticker was I looking at? So CDNA is a, a nice one. We've got uh, we've got a considerable uh, portion locked in here. Not only the 302 bucks we've already taken off the table, but that's probably the worst we're going to get. So uh, another 303 bucks is coming our way. Yes, options Padwan. It will be uh, recorded and it will be posted on the video tutorials page of the website um, after I get it rendered tonight sometime. Uh, I guess DDD and, and Haynes brand are the only things we haven't looked at. Uh, DDD, whoops, there we go. DDD, I'm not liking these high wicks, but we have already taken out our first um, target and we really can't move our stop up anymore at this point. So uh, we'll leave it there without, you know, tempting to be uh, stopped out. We'll just hope that it does this, finds a little support and makes the run up towards that next target. And what was the final one? Uh, but at any rate, our, our stop has been moved up. So even if we are stopped out of this sucker, we are stopped out at a, a you know, 34 cent gain on the thing, assuming we don't have a huge gap down. So that will work nice. Haynes brand has been working today. And it looks like it melded some at the close, but uh, you can't ask for anything stronger than that. It really should consolidate. It would be nice to see a little consolidation here before it pushes on. Um, but I've been moving the stop up here, and right now VSTOP is saying we should be about 2040, which is doggone near uh, that 2051 level. So let's uh, let's go ahead and move that now. Twenty forty. My hands won't work today. Okay, so that's all of the existing positions, I believe. And uh, again, you can find the videos as I marked up and planned out each of these on the uh, YouTube channel or on the website uh, under that uh, TV 2020 Trade Plans blog. So with that out of the way, let's look at some improvements that have been made. Uh, first of all, and I'll just do this quickly, under Performance Widget, you can now print your um, your performance reports, and those do work now. We've tested them all. Uh, certainly all work for us. Um, you know, So any of these that, that you want to print out, you certainly can. Obviously, you probably want to get one with data before you go printing it. Uh, and that includes the overall... Um, the overall statistics for a particular account. Uh, you can print that or you could print all accounts. Uh, and when you print all accounts, you don't get the graph. Uh, that would be meaningless with a bunch of uh, different accounts, but you do get a breakdown of each uh, of the overall statistics for each of the accounts that you have. So that's the, the main fix there on the performance widget. Let's talk about goals. Uh, let me ask a question. Is anyone here the person who asked about planning their goals in percentages instead of dollars? Because if so, this is specifically for you. I, I honestly can't for the life of me remember who asked, but they asked on one of these Wednesday sessions. 
so the bottom line is that we have now enabled the ability to um, plan by percents, and we have also um, added the annualized uh, figure for your goal. So you can plan it by dollars. So I want to go to $125,000. That's 22.5%. If I want to go to $126,000, um, that's going to tell me I need slightly more per month, and that's 23.5% annualized. Uh, the same thing down here, the average win size in dollars and in percent, average loss size in dollars and in percent. Uh, and let's make this 150, and that would be almost 5%. That's too close for comfort for me, so let's say we've got to bump up the goal for... Uh, Oh, let's make 20 bucks better there, and we'll reduce this down to 135. We're just barely making our uh, our goal of this with a 70% win rate in 10 trades. Um, the average trade would need to be a 6% win to make this plan work, but I'm going to say that that's, uh, that's good enough for me. Actually, I'm just going to drop this back to 125, and that will give us a little cushion, I think. Yeah, give us a 1% cushion. So let's go ahead and save that. Um, so that's how you plan by dollars. If you uh, enable percent, oh, oh, something I should tell you. If you do not have percentage enabled, you cannot edit the percentage values. You can change what a number is sometimes, but it will be erased when you go to the next field. When you're planning by dollars, you can only change dollar figures. Um, when you're planning by percent, uh, you can change percents and uh, do it that way. So if I wanted to, um, I'm sorry, let's do 2% per month. It tells me that's going to be uh, almost 27% annualized and it would make 129,374.93 my goal. Uh, so again, I'm planning by percent and if I want to improve my win size, uh, let's say I want to make it 11%. Uh, that would increase the dollars, or if I make this 5%, that uh, will increase the dollars as well. So that's basically what I wanted to show you. You can now plan your goals in either dollars or percent, but only one or the other at a, sing at a single time. Um, and of course, you can print these things off as well. Uh, and if you print them off for all accounts, um, you have the, the choice of printing the current goal, all the goals for, for a single account. So if I've, in this case, I've got two saved goals for this account, so I could print both of them. Or I could print the current goals for all accounts, which is kind of the, the inverse. Instead of um, all goals from one account, it's the current goal across all accounts. Okay, uh, well, I guess maybe I'll just give you a preview. So it's just uh, for all accounts, current goals, it's more of a spreadsheet type of uh, output for you. But you can see uh, what you're doing in terms of starting a balance, um, additional planned withdrawals and deposits per period, um, the goal gain per, per month. Uh, in this case, we're planning in months and the goal percentage gain per month and so forth. So that just gives you a chance to see let's do it the other way in this case uh, when we're looking at all goals for the current account I got two sets of, uh, of goals here um, they started with different starting balances they were both planned the same way in months 12 months uh, and they have difference in uh, percentages there so it will give you uh, a good summary of, of where you're at and, and where you're headed. I see some typing, so I will hold on. Okay, so Philippe is asking about the performance widget and uh, 
uh, I always get these messed up. I think this is uh, X and this is Y. And if you want to change the date, so in this case, I'm showing all of 2018. Oh, you meant the goal widget. Okay. Um, so if, if you want to um, show fewer amounts of the, the past, down here you have two carats. So if you go right, you're showing only two months now or one month or no months into the past, okay? Um, and you're showing 13 months ahead. You can change that to 12 months ahead. You know, you could look at just six months if you want, but it kind of makes sense if you're doing a 12-month uh, goal that you want to look at 12 months. In terms of um, actually diving down in, if you want to look at any portion of the uh, of the graph itself, uh, for example, we're back here right now. So let's just zoom in. So I clicked in the upper, I did a left click in the upper left hand corner, dragged down to create this box, and then when I let go, it zooms in. Uh, just exactly the opposite is what you would do to zoom back out. You just anywhere you hold down with your left mouse, go up and left, and it zooms back out. Okay, in your opinion, if you were trading two accounts, one is IRA and the other is a regular account, and you are currently trying to grow them both, would you recommend treating it as one portfolio and having different positions in each, or would you put it put the same positions in both accounts? Okay, um, first of all, I'm going to tell you what I would do. I'm not giving you financial advice um, because that's a legal no-no. And so what I would do is that if I have the same goals in, in both accounts, in other words, I have the same time horizons, uh, I'm trading them in the same style, I'm using the same vehicles, um, then I would probably treat them as if it was one big account. Um, it, uh, you know, I guess it begs the question a little bit why you would keep them separate. Um, but, um, if you did, um, you know, typically there's going to be a different trading style. So if, if I have an IRA account that may be meant for slower term growth, um, and Doug talks about this or has talked about it in the past. And the terms he likes to use is he has a get rich account and he has a stay rich account. Um, and so the stay rich account is managed as a uh, much more conservative, much more um, mutual fund like um, approach with a longer term time horizon. And then his trading account, he trades under his normal trading criteria, and it's for swing trading and uh, much you know shorter term positions. So that's how I would approach it. Uh, if they are both identical goals and uh, identical time horizons, you can treat it as one account. Um, but personally, um, if I have two accounts, I'm going to have two different sets of goals and time horizons and so they'll end up being treated treated differently and they may or may not have the same position probably not because if something looks like a good trade for the next two weeks it probably is a different profile than something that looks good for a one-year hold sort of thing maybe not but that's that's how i would see it the point is if you have different time horizon and different goals uh, and you're looking at different, you know, different patterns for a year versus two weeks. Um, they're going to need to be planned differently, and so the positions are just going to be different. Oh, you're welcome, Robin. Okay, uh, so are there any questions? I didn't really want to go through... Um, planning goals. I've done that in the past, uh, but I didn't want to do that specifically today. I just wanted to highlight the differences 
uh, that we have now enabled with the uh, planning by percent and uh, the printing functionality there. So uh, with that said, let me go to the, by the way, I apologize if you hear my dog bang in the background, but she's outside and uh, wants to come in, but I'm just going to leave her there for now. She needs some outside time. So let's look at uh, some trades, see if we can't put together some plans that uh, we might be able to use tomorrow. Uh, let me give you a couple off of my list, uh, things that I've been watching. Uh, to be honest with you, the last half hour I did not follow through on, on these things, and so I'm not sure which of these I like right now. Uh, Jake is asking for the recording. Is there not an advantage to using percent as mentioned above? I don't know that there really is, Jake. Um, some people think in dollars. Some people think in percent. Um, I just I know that from dealing with different people in, in coaching and just talking to different traders. Uh, some people will say, my goal is to make 25000 this year. And some people will say, my goal is to make 200% or, you know, something uh, usually aggressive if they're an options trader. But, you know, typically they'll say, oh, I'm going to make 25%. Um, so it's, it's different. Uh, it's easy for us to do planning by percentage when we're dealing with the trading room because there are, you know, a couple hundred people and we know for a fact some of them have several million dollars in their trading account and some of them have five thousand dollars in their trading account so working in percentages makes it easier uh yeah it, but it depends on your goal horizon i and i i see i understand what you're saying and i tend to work uh, i i think in percentages uh, but, as I said, I, I know a lot of people that are um, step by step and, you know, I want to I want to make, you know, two thousand dollars a month uh, because that's, you know, if I get there and I can do that consistently, that's going to cover my living expenses sort of thing um, or five thousand or whatever the number is. And so they will think in terms of those dollars other people think I want to, you know, uh, this is a long term account for me and I just want to increase it by, you know, 50 percent or 25 percent a year or whatever I'm trying to do and think of it in that, those terms. And the dollars are not that, you know, it's not critical if it's an odd number of dollars that come out. Sorry about my voice and I just had to take a drink. Uh, allergies are trying to kill me here this time of year, I guess. Let me continue looking here. Uh, NPTN is one I've been keeping an eye on. It's not ready. It's You can see a little buy box there. Pop out of the box is setting up. It's not, not working yet. Uh, PBG uh, took off the other day, but uh, has this been consolidating since? It hasn't really given... Uh, pushed off this uh, former resistance, now support level, uh, to make its next assault. That one's getting ready. AGRO is pulling back, just walking the stairs like it normally does. And we're looking for a buy signal here. It looks like that this line has been drawn for a couple weeks. And it looks like it's going to uh, hold up here as support. Cliffs. C-SPAN, BGFV, um, may, may be a little bit uh, away from us here. Let's see. If we were to make it up to this uh, level where I have both a support and resistance level drawn as well a FIB extension of this run, um, that uh, that would be about seven percent or so. Uh, so if you can uh, 
can look at that to get most of your goal off of the trade um, at that level, then that would work for you. If not, you need to, uh, to look at a second goal, whether it's up in here or up in here, or a second target, I'm sorry. Uh, so let's not do that one. EEQ is one I like. I like that there's two or three related. EEP, EEQ, and another one. Uh, but uh, this is Enbridge. Uh, we had this beautiful bullish engulfing candle. We've now had a couple dojis consolidating right here at this little resistance level uh, and looking for a pop-up through here. Uh, on that, we will have a pretty tight stop with a support level to protect that stop. I'm looking at about eh, right there. I got about right 935 ish for a stop right below the 50, which is now headed up uh, and look for an entry just above the highs here. And uh, so we would have what is that uh, about a four let's call it four and a half percent, but it's a little less than that. Let's call it four percent stop looking for about an 18 percent uh, basically you can consider this waterfall to be like a gap so we're looking for a gap fill if we go out to a weekly chart we can see that that level does hold up that was a uh, a level that had some touches in the past and then we have some more touches up here at that uh, 1240 level so going back here those are the two levels I've got marked out, and for an RBB, it goes to the 200, which is right where that 1240 level is. So you can look at one or two targets. Looks like I had planned a couple targets there when I looked at this before. And let's uh, let's put together a trade plan for EEQ. Okay, so there's our large bull engulfing candle and our couple dojis. Ugh, looks like it reports today. So I'm not sure if it reported after market or before market this morning. Since it was a little doji candle today, I'm going to guess that it reports after market. So it's reporting right now. And that one comes off the table for me because, well... No, let's plan this out because with earnings out of the way, if we get a move tomorrow, um, that might uh, might make for a nice post-earnings move. Let's say that we could get an entry up here. What was the highs? Highs were 9.69, 9.66, 9.70. Let's just call it 9.70. Maybe 975. So with a 975 move and about a 12 or 1155 as a first target, and about 1235 as a second target, and our stop. What's it say? V stop says 933. Let's be conservative and just say 930. Uh, so with that position, it says we can do 277 shares. Let's try 300 shares, see what that does for us. It's going to give us a little bit more of a risk than that 125, but $135 risk I can certainly handle. Um, and that's only 2%, 2 percent, two and a quarter percent of the account. So if we sold 150 of it at that first target, um, we're making almost... 18.5%, uh, which has given us 4 to 1. And when I've got 270 uh, to that first uh, target, I'm just going to go ahead and put 175 off at that first target. And that gets me up over the 300 that uh, I tend to have as a goal. And that makes 125 at the second. So we're getting 4 to 1 at the first target. We're getting four and three quarters 4.74 to one at the second target uh, risking 135 bucks to make let's do this risking 135 bucks to make 540 or 
six forty. Is that right, Robin? I don't know. Um, uh, you could check a different source uh, to be sure. It is possible this is also a partnership. Um, does it say partnership? It doesn't really say. If it's a partnership, uh, an MLP, it would report probably on a monthly basis. And so that might be the reason. We'd have to check. But again, the first thing is that earnings date, make sure that it's out of the way and not coming right in front of us. And then secondly, price is doing what we want it to do. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've got the price action, uh, a signal, and the, the pattern, the rounded bottom breakout, as well as um, if you squint, you can see a shoulder. Let me get my drawing tool. You can see a shoulder and a head and a shoulder. So that inverted head and shoulders working for you as well. <coughs> Again, excuse me, I apologize for my throat. But that's uh, the EEQ trade plan uh, is one that I've been watching and I like. Dean Foods, uh, this is not ready for me because I've got resistance overhead. EEP is another of this Enridge, yeah, LP. So I bet the EEQ is a partnership as well, and that means they probably report every month. Again, pulling back here, I would be looking for a breakout, looking for that, you know, waterfall is like a gap, so it's kind of like a gap fill is what I'm looking for. Yeah, E and B is the other one. Yeah, I know that there, there are several uh, of the Anbridge companies. So, MTG. Uh, let's look at Gray Television. Um, before I do that, let's put in some support and resistance. Let's go out to a, a weekly. I'm fairly comfortable with those levels. I'm fairly comfortable that we're going to be clear up into this area. Uh, could we adjust this up a touch or down a touch? Yeah. Uh, we could come up here like that. We could theoretically come down here like this. I guess I prefer right in this area. We've got a few touches there, almost a touch there, a couple touches here, touch there, there, a couple there. So this is pretty good. Let's go back to daily. Uh, so on this, we've got a bullish Harami today. And we would be looking for a breakout. So let's just put it up in here. Probably use something. Let's see what V stops is 1127, which is way down in here. And that's too wide for my taste. So I'm probably going to use these two support levels to protect my stop. Uh, I would be looking on follow through of a breakout here. So my entry would be right around there, whatever that is. It's called 12 bucks. With that first target up here, about 13, 15, 13, 20. And that second target up in here, uh, about 14, 20. Let's see what a trade plan would look like for GTN. Earnings are out of the way. Uh, looks like we've got that Harami, but it's not registering Harami today. We've got the RBB. 
Uh, it's is this got a yeah not really I was gonna say inverted head and shoulders but it doesn't really have it we do have four bullish factors we have the 50 longer term and the ADMA not quite above the 34 EMA yet uh, so we've got those two bearish factors uh, we got enough liquidity let's do a one entry to exit plan so what did I say about 12 bucks entry and about 1165 stop with a 13 split the difference 1317 first target and 1420 second target uh, it says we can do 357 shares let's go ahead and try 300 see what that does for us in size of the account uh, it's only two and three quarters percent so let's go ahead and bump that up to 400 it's only 3.6 percent of the account but we are risking 140 instead of that 125 we were looking for uh, but what happens if we sell half the shares at this first account or at this first level um, first of all if we sell all the shares we make about nine and three quarters percent which is 468 bucks risking 140 to make 468 getting three and a third to one but if we could make that second target up here around the 50 or I mean the 200 and uh, that other resistance potential at that case we'll be getting almost five to one and we're looking at uh, 674 bucks for the trade so I'm risking 140 for the potential to make uh, 674 is, uh, is certainly doable in my book and I think that might be a, a plan uh, to, to look at uh, make it do what you want it to do make it follow through don't just buy it and hope that it'll do that but uh, if you make it on the follow through when these support levels are tight below and the resistance is far away and that by the way Jake is what I was pointing to earlier when we talked in the other room um, that that's what you want to do you want to buy close to support and far from resistance or sell close to resistance and buy close to support for a, uh, a short position so that's what I would be looking at on the GTN trade I see some typing so I'm gonna hang on maybe not I'll try to find one more off of my list Uh, Roger, my method for placing stops is I want to have, whenever possible, I want to have a support level protecting my stop. So I want to be buying close to support with my stop on the other side of support. Um, and ideally, it would be with volatility stop, which is based on the average true range. And I use 10 days and one and a half times the ATR to define where the volatility stop should be if it's more than one and a half times as volatile as it has been um, I probably want to be stopped out so ideally I would have both the V stop working for me and um, a support level so we can see across these highs here and across these lows that looks like there's a support level in there someplace and volatility stop also says 1150 which is right there which is pretty close to a line drawn across these tops there so that's where it's saying the the stop should be um, I definitely want to have some protection and that would be a four and a half percent stop you have to just measure that against up here we have a 
uh, support and resistance level that matches up with the 61.8 extension of this, I guess, four day run there. So let's uh, go out to the weekly. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable, uh, reasonably well adhered to uh, potential level there. There's probably another one up here where we've got a lot of stops, touches right at that level. So I would use those two targets. I would be looking for a breakout. So I would be looking to buy up in here. Something like in here. Let us stop down in right down there someplace. And I would be looking for two potential targets. I'm not sure I'm going to get two to one here, so let's let's look at it and see. Earnings are out of the way. We've got some good factors in our favor. Uh, let's do one entry and two exits. So let's say that this is a twelve twenty entry. And a thirteen thirty I have clearly done something wrong here. Let's start over. One entry, two exits. It's remembering something from someplace. I'm going to have to check on this. 1220. We don't know how many shares yet. 1330. Uh, 1397. And the stop, what did I say, 1160? Something like that. I have somehow corrupted this record. Let me just do this. Okay, let's try that again. 1220. 208 shares. Let's just make it 200. Tiny position. 1.86% uh, uh, of the account, but $120 worth of, of risk. Uh, I suppose I could... could uh, See what 300 that should take us up to about 180. Yeah, 180 in risk. That's a little bit more than I want to take. So let's try 250. 
uh, at 250 shares, uh, we're only at two and a third percent, $150, I can handle that. And let's say I take 125 off at the first target. I'm not quite getting my two to one as I suspected. Uh, but if I sold the whole position there, I'd make 275. So this is probably gonna be a pass for me, which is maybe what the damn thing was telling me in the first place. And I would have to be pretty darn sure I was going to get that second target uh, to get my two to one. So I'm going to pass on that trade. Okay. So enough of me talking. Let's give you a chance here. Is there any tickers you want to take a look at? Um, it's been 45 minutes. So if there are any tickers you want me to look at, let me know. I will do so. Uh, otherwise, I will... Uh, We'll call it a night. Okay, Roger's question is setting stops three parts. One, vol level. Uh, I... Uh, I'm assuming you're going to mean vol stop to below support. Uh, I'm, I'm, vol level means volatility, I guess is what you're saying. Um, so, yes, uh, the first, the primary thing, the primary thing for me, Roger, is I want to be protected by support. So I want to be buying above for long, above and close to support. And I want my stop to be below and close to that support level as well. So that's where you know, I want a little protection for my stop to prevent being run. The second thing that I want is um, ideally that will line up with the volatility stop, which is a measure of the, the stock's average true range or average volatility. And I use one and a half time its average daily volatility so that I know that my stop is set um, one and a half times its normal daily move below uh, where it would be taken out. So if it moves down one and a half times it, its normal daily move, uh, that probably means it's moving bearish and I want to be out. So that's, that's the second part of it. And um, I'm not exactly sure. So you're asking me, what are the ATR elements? So ATR is average true range, and I use volatility stop, which um, you can do an internet search and, and get the, the formula out there. Uh, but basically, it uh, I've got it set to 10 periods. And the reason I choose 10 periods is because I'm typically a swing trader. 10 periods is two weeks, that works. And so I want to say, what is the average true range over the last 10 days? Multiply that by one and a half, and that's where we're going to set our stop. Um, and uh, so that's, that's how you come up with it. I hope that helps. Uh, Bob, CTRL. To me, it is. Um, it, it depends on how you look at it, but let's let's say that for an RBB, the target is up here at the, the 200 level. This looks like a level where we've had a number of touches in the past, so I'm expecting potential resistance right in that area. So how far above is of that? You know, that's only 3% above where we're at right now. In the meantime, where is support? Even, even if I said that is support, which it may be, um, so if I, I said that was support, that's three and a third percent. So I'm getting less than one to one on a risk reward. So that's, that's just not a trade for me. Uh, General Mills was the trade we, we entered today as the feature trade idea. You can see my trade plan uh, if you go out and look at the blog uh, or the YouTube video. But it uh, opened up above, came back down, and bounced up off of uh, the setup level. Um, 
I did not, and I mentioned this in the video, I did not think this was strong resistance. And so I was really looking for this gap fill to be the real potential first resistance. So with a stop fairly close below the 50 and below that previous shelf that is acting as, <coughs> excuse me, um, support, or I hope it is, it acted that way yesterday. I'm looking at risking about two and a third percent for worst case, almost 4.8 percent. But I really think the first target is up here, about 12 and a third percent away. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's the trade plan that I put together. And let me switch accounts and go to that trade plan. So this is the trade plan that I put together. We've got two weeks till earnings. Um, and we've got uh, a small position, 100 shares. Uh, that's 4% you know, of this account. And it's basically risking 112 bucks for the chance at this first target to make 538. That's almost 5 to 1. I think I looked at this earlier, 4325. Yeah, we're not moving the stop at all. So that's what we have there. Okay, guys, it's been almost an hour. So why don't we call it good? And I will stick around if you want to ask questions, but I want to end the recording here. So before I do, let me put this back up. There we go. If you need to contact me, you can do so at ed at tradervision2020.com or support at tradervision2020.com. Uh, of course, be sure to check out the blog on the website under Trade Ideas. And I will talk to you guys soon, maybe next week, uh, hopefully in the trading room. And we will see you in the blog for sure each morning. Thanks so much, guys.